Hello everyone, Aaron again with another short video on, a, on what I think is a really, really great gun. Today we're going to be looking at the Air Arms S510 Extra. Now this gun here uh, has been around for a while and uh, I know the first time I ever saw it, I saw a guy down in South Africa that we all are aware of now uh, under the heading of Air Arms Hunting South Africa named Matt DeBoer and Matt was shooting this gun or a gun on this platform and Matt, Matt was shooting that gun out past a hundred yards and killing dubs and all kind of other varmin with it and I, I remember when he held the gun up because I remember uh, he's since changed his uh, his logo but his logo used to be him holding this gun and the gun was so long I think it actually shot it actually went off screen but again, I was amazed by what he could do with that gun. I'm saying, my God, I don't know what that gun is, but can that thing, can that thing put a pellet down range and can it put it down range on this target? So finally, I get to get, have the gun in my hand. I'm, I can't say this is the actual gun it was shooting because this gun comes a couple, in a, but this was the platform. Had to be. So this gun has already proven to me what it can do uh, because I see it in the hands of Matt. But let me talk to you a little bit more about this gun in terms of some of the details and then we're going to see what it can do. Uh, outside as we go. This game gun here is chambered in 177. It's made in England and uh, and uh, Air Arms, I don't know how popular they are over here but I've been watching a lot of uh, YouTube channels and I tell you Air Arms are big over in England and uh, this gun here I think is going to be able to show, show us one of the reasons why that that seems to be the case. Now this gun has a popular wood stock and it's in what is called um, hunter green as far as the color and if you take a real good look at it, it is, it's, a green, it's got a greenish hue to it I really like the way this gun looks uh, it's not that, that brown one, brown or red that you always see uh, so I really do like that now the gun is long as I alluded to earlier it's, um, it's 36 inches long and now if you add a 5 I'm sorry a 8 inch uh, moderated to the front of this thing now all of a sudden you're looking at uh, 44 inches and I think that's about what Matt guns was about 44 inches long so and it, and, and, and it's, it is even though it's fully shrouded it's not backyard friendly so if you get one and you want to shoot in an urban environment uh, you're going to in my opinion anyway have to get a shroud for it and that is going to push it out there a lot longer than it actually is right now but even though this gun is, 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 is 36 inches long, it is light. Very, very light. When you look at this thing, it's like it's going to weigh a ton. It's only 7.5 pounds. And the balance on this thing is amazing. You hold it right there, till the tip forward or backwards. Right, you got it right at the point. That's where you want all guns to be when you hold them. You don't want that gun to do anything when you hold it right there tipping, at the tipping point. You want it to lock right there. Uh, that's going to make your accuracy, especially off the shoulder, it's going to make your accuracy so much, so much better. So the balance on this gun is just amazing. Now it has a long air cylinder to go with this long barrel. This air cylinder, I didn't measure the length on it, but it is quite long compared to a lot of other air cylinders uh, that I've seen. But it does give you quite a bit of air. This thing here is um, 231 cc's um, and it can be filled to uh, 2,900 psi. And in, in 177, as this gun is, that's going to yield you between 50 and 60 shots. And optimum for shooting this gun is what I've been, what I've found out by a little research is that shooting a, a, a JSB 8.48 grain uh, 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 pellet in it at a pace of about 950 feet per second is optimum for short and long range hunting. It really stabilizes the pellet as it gets down range. <coughs> Excuse me. It has a Lothar Walther barrel, so we know that. We know all know how accurate that barrel is and how that it is standard stood the test of time and how it's just spot on for hitting its target. Add that to the length and I can see why this gun is so accurate in terms of that. Just superior accuracy from everything I've seen about it. Now this gun here um, has an adjustable power setting. One thing I wish they would do with all guns is put an adjustable power setting on it. Because people are not shooting one way anymore. We're shooting in all kinds of different types of scenarios. 
and, and, and putting the pellet out there at 950 feet per second or 1,050 feet per second, it's, it's a lot more than we need sometimes. So if it's adjustable, without us going in and messing around, with, messing around with, the, with the hammer spring and all this other stuff, it makes it really, really attractive. Now, with this gun here, the main thing about it, that I love about this gun is this. You can dial it all the way down to 550 feet per second or all the way up to an optimum 1,050 feet per second. That's 550 feet per second variance between that, that you can play with. That is great, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're shooting at um, furry dogs out to 100 yards or if you're shooting at rats and chipmunks at 20 yards. This gun will do it because you can play with those ranges, how hard it's going to be hitting at each place. Uh, I really don't like it when my pellet goes through this object and comes out on the other side with just as much power as it actually entered the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's overkill. I think it's dangerous. I think it can, it can, it can, it can be problematic in the long run if that is the case. So the power adjuster on this thing is just amazing to me. Now, one of the down things sides to this gun that kind of turns me off a little bit is it's not regulated. I saw people, a lot of people shooting this thing and it wasn't regulated. <coughs> And we all know that you got this power curve, and you need to know where it is optimum within that power curve. And usually when you have that, you're going to find that you really only have maybe 20, 25 pellets that are optimum. Then you're going to start even either use hold over or hold under to adjust for the rest of it. And that's, you know, in, a, in a shooting situation, you don't always have time to do all those calculations. You just got to pull the trigger. So in that particular case, uh, not having a regulator is, is, is not good. But also, if you do put a regulator in it, and I think you can just put a regulator in this one, is that uh, the air gauge on the bottom no longer tells you how much air there is in the tank. It now tells you what the regulator's uh, uh, pr uh, pressure is, which can be very good because you know exactly what your regulator is set to, but now you have no idea what, what fuel pressure your gun is at um, once you start to shoot and it starts to drop. So that is one of the downsides to it. Uh, not having a regulator or adding a regulator can be, to me, both problem, problematic in, in, in terms of that. It has 11 millimeter dovetail on it, and as I said before, 11 millimeter dovetails are fine with me. These guns don't kick, so uh, you don't really need Picatinny to, to, to make that scope stationary. Um, dovetail works just as well, and I really like the guns, though. A lot of the guns now are starting to come out with dual. I won't say a lot. I've seen some that come out with dual. They're Picatinny and their dovetail. I think it's a good option to, to allow you to go either way with it. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting a little bit of a cold. Can't help the cough. It has a ventilated rib in the back that's, that's rubberized and really, really comfortable to the shoulder. And it sticks to the shoulder once you place it there. It doesn't slide up and down like a, a wooden one would do or a plastic one might. So uh, that's, that, that, that rubberized uh, butt plate. Uh, it's going to be something to make the gun shoulder better and hold better in this position once you put it there. Now the gun has a cocking lever and as you know I'm really in love with cocking levers because they cock, they cock smoothly. They pull the thing straight back where if you got a bolt and you putting pressure on, on, on it coming any kind of way it can lock on you a little bit. Uh, so I like the mechanical, the mechanical advantage that this particular uh, lever gives to you and then this makes it so effortless and so easy to cock and, and put a pellet in. One of the downsides here is that uh, in, the, um, in the safety, the safety is on the trigger. You can pop it off quite easily, but it's not automatic, so that means it's manual. If it's manual, that means that you have to set it. <coughs> One of the advantages of, um, of having a manual is that once you cock it, you know there's a pellet in there. I've been in shooting situations where I wasn't sure if there was a pellet in there, and I dropped another pellet and I stacked pellets. And now you got to shoot it off, and then rack another one. And hope you still, that 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 uh, that the prey that you're after doesn't notice that and, and run off. So that's one of the things you have to keep in mind. Now this thing has a match grade trigger. I'm told. It's totally adjustable. So that means you can get this trigger down to to so fine that it just goes off as soon as you touch it, all the way up to something a little bit more safer. But the nice thing about that though is that we all know that as you put pressure on the trigger to pull it. The more you put on, the more tension you have to put on your hand, the more tension you have on your hand, the more shake you're going to get. But if you, if you just, if you could just tap it, uh, the gun stays a lot more stable. So mass grade triggers is, makes this gun optimal for me. Um, as far as filling the gun, 
it has a protective cap over the front that you screw off. And in this particular case, we just, we, just, we just leave the probe on it. But you screw that off, put the probe on, screw it back on, keep out dust in review and that sort of thing. Now, last thing I want to say about this gun is this, is that my reading on it. I'm going to rate this gun for a longie. <laughs> That's a new name. For a longie, I'm going to give this thing a 9.5. I'm going to give it to it because of the balance, because of the way it feels, because of the weight, and the maneuverability of it. It's a little long for me, but this thing feels good. And it just seems like uh, you're going to hit whatever you're aiming at. It gives you that confidence. So exceptional balance, exceptional accuracy, quietness could come down a little bit, but overall 9.0. The price point on this gun is $1,000. And I tell you this, it's worth every dime of $1,000. Candy shot groups with it that is amazing. And I hope to shoot something here today to demonstrate how amazing this gun is too. And if you don't think that that's the case, go on YouTube and type in uh, Air Arms S510 Extra or the, uh, or the Extreme. I think I have one called Extreme or something like that above this one. Uh, all it is, I think, is a chip this is stock. And, and see just what this gun can do. So what I'm going to do is now is go outside and see what we can do with it at 30 yards. Come back in, do some closing remarks on it, and uh, close this thing down. So let's take it outside and see what she can do, all right? Well, there it is. Let me just say this. You know, when you talk, when I watch the English channels, um, UK and so on, I hear Air Arms, Air Arms, Brokaw, all of these names that I'm not that familiar with. And I see them uh, shooting, and I see the accuracy of these guns. And, 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 and just amazed at the accuracy, especially given the, the limitations that are put on their guns over there in terms of foot pounds. But let me just say this about this gun. I love this gun, and I really do not like long guns. Uh, in terms of feel, in terms of accuracy, in terms of just um, lightness, seven and a half pounds, in terms of balance, perfect balance, uh, this gun goes high on my list. And the accuracy, I'm just going to bring this out. This is me, you know, I don't shoot that well. You guys know that. I don't shoot that well. But if I were to use my calipers on this and go uh, inside diameter, inside diameter, even on my worst shots, I pull, I shot an extra shot on this one because I pulled this high one. And I wanted to get that out of there because that was me. That's really, that's really what happened there. This gun is accurate. It's amazingly accurate to me. Um, now, what I used in it today was the... Uh, JSB Exact Heavy Diablo uh, pellets in 10.34 grain. That's the Heavy 177 pellet. And it handled it well. Um, there, it may be uh, pellet force fussy. There may be another pellet out there that shoots better than this one. If it does, man, this gun shoots lights out. So overall, I'm, I'm going to rate this gun here at a 9.5. And I would give it a 10. The only reason it's not getting a 10 is uh, there's a... Uh, there's a little bit about it in terms of this shroud. The shroud's a little loud for me. Uh, sometime uh, I didn't shoot this in the magazine. I shot it with the with the uh, with the single shot tray, and that can get really fiddly sometimes. I had a little trouble getting it to pop open in every time. But if it wasn't for that, this would be a ten. So uh, from now on, when I hear people talking about air arms, I would have great respect for the guns that they're talking about uh, because these people know what they got, what they're doing uh, in making their guns there. So that's another video in the bag. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something from it. And I hope to be doing another one for you very soon. 
So with that, uh, we bid you farewell and good shooting and good health and let's stay, stay safe as we can.